This one came out really well. Everything about this is a really good print. It's actually very readable. I think this one was a success, guys. This one was good. What's up, superstars? Today we're doing a tutorial on how to make color range and black knockout effects using Adobe Photoshop for DTF printing. We generated this artwork from Mid Journey. In this guide, we'll walk you through the steps to achieve precise color separations and striking black knockouts, ensuring your prints are both vivid and crisp. Ready to take your designs to the next level? Let's get started. Let's begin by opening the image we want to use in Photoshop. Unlock the layer, go to image, image size, and change the resolution to 300. Zoom out of the design and open the brushes panel. Press I to activate the eyedropper tool, pick a background color, and use the default brushes in Photoshop. Use the brush to blend the edges of the clouds. I recommend using a pastel brush for this. You can also clean up unnecessary parts of the design to make it more cohesive. Now let's zoom in and begin adjusting the colors of the artwork. Go to select color range, choose the color red, and adjust the fuzziness slider. To add more colors, select the plus eyedropper and click in the preview area or image. The fuzziness setting determines the range of colors selected, affecting the amount of partially selected pixels. Go to adjustments, hue or saturation, and ensure to check colorize. This will allow you to change the entire image to the same color. Adjust the sliders to change the color to your preference. For example, I want to change the red to violet. Now repeat the steps by selecting a darker shade of violet and adjusting the fuzziness slider. Decrease the value to narrow down the selection, focusing on darker tones. Let's change the color of the skull and background to green. Adjust the fuzziness so that only the skull and its shadow are visible in the preview. Go to adjustments, hue, saturation, and experiment with the colors to achieve the desired green hue. Lastly, let's change the color of the lighter part of the skull. Go to Selectra's color range, pick the color, and adjust the fuzziness. Then go to adjustments, hue, saturation, check colorize, and modify the color as desired. Select all the hue saturation adjustment layers, then right click and choose create clipping mask to apply them only to the layers directly below them. Now let's include layer zero. Press command J to duplicate it, then command E to merge the selected layers together. Rename the layer to merged. Right click on the layer and choose duplicate layer then change the document destination to new. Go to image and select 8 bits channel. Go to image mode grayscale, then dismiss the pop-up window. Now prepare the image for half toning by going to image adjustments levels. Adjust the sliders to modify the tonal range and color balance of the image. Enhance the highlights and make the shadows darker towards black. This step is crucial as it will show the areas where half tone effects can be applied effectively. Go to Image, Mode, Bitmap, flatten the layers when prompted. In the Bitmap window, adjust the settings. Frequency determines the size of the halftone dots at their maximum diameter, and angle changes the direction of the dot pattern. Press Command A to select all, then Command C to copy. After that, return to the original file. Add a layer mask and press Option to enter the mask. Press Command V to paste. Add a new layer and set it as the background. Use the Paint Bucket tool to fill this layer with your chosen color. Select the other layers and group them to keep your layers organized and tidy. Zoom in to see the dots closely. Let's check if the design looks good on a white background. Hide the background layer and the group to focus on the merge layer only. Go to File, Save As, and select Photoshop PDF as the file format. 
All right, superstars, let's put this on a gang sheet. So we're just gonna go to transfersuperstars.com. It's gonna be the first one, and we're gonna make ourselves a gang sheet using a gang sheet builder. So we're gonna do a 22 by 12 builder on gang sheet. Just upload your design. Wait until this is done loading up. All right, we're just gonna click it first and then resize it down. We're gonna size this to 12 inches for the width, and then we're just gonna tilt it to its side. We're gonna do another one, but this time we're gonna make it smaller so we can put it in this area just so we could take up the room. All right, we got it uploaded here. I'm gonna just click on it once. Let's change the width and we're gonna make it three inches. All right, looks nice. Let's get the save and print it. What's up, superstars? I got the print here. Let's check out these measurements. All right, let's check some measurements out here. So we got a good 16 and a quarter, good 16. Looks like about 12 inches on its width. All right, let's see what kind of shirt we're using. For our blanks, we are using our small Bella Canvas 3001. For our heat press, we're using our Heatmaster Prisma. It's been a fan favorite for all our videos, so why stop now? It has a 16 by 20 layout, a 10 inch pullout, and you could also thread your shirts. So let's get started. So we got a laser system set up. If you guys want to know about this laser system a little bit more with the link in the description below, we'll give you all that information. Let's thread our shirt. And I, I did prior try to find a good alignment for this, but since this is these too many pixels off to the side, we're just going to use the head as a reference point. So. You see that little indentation, you know why. <laughs> so using that as a reference point, we're just gonna go up. We're gonna go up a little bit. And if you guys need to know more and you guys don't have a laser system, you guys could definitely do this the four finger method. And you go on to the edge of the design of where you guys would want. For this one since this has a very large proportions of things sticking out i don't mind this sticking up a little bit more so we're going to keep it at that so this is a hot and cold peel we do have a lot of material here so i would recommend for anyone that has smaller details definitely wait for 15 seconds but if you do have a large like print, you could easily peel it right away. For this one, we are gonna wait and we're just gonna kind of just this off. Wow. All right, cool. Let's put this matte finish on for the second press. did have a lot of the gradients at the bottom that didn't come on but honestly overall it made it very unique with the cloud effect everything about this is a really good print i think this one was a success guys this one was good not even that it's actually very breathable that's crazy that's, that's really nice there you guys have it. That's how you guys make a color range and a black knockout effect using Adobe Photoshop. And in the end, we were able to make this a printable, wearable, sellable graphic tee. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. We enjoyed making it. And if you guys are looking for a DTF supplier or just looking for a better one, definitely give us a shot. Our link is in the description below. And if you guys valued this video a lot, please like and subscribe. It helps us make more videos like this. My name is Matt. I hope to see you guys soon.